Good afternoon, guys. Live from my classroom today, something a little bit different for everybody. See, I'm Forrest Benson. I'm a professor here at Thrust Institute of Maidnets. So some of the questions we get often on our tours is what to expect when you're going to A&P school. And you know, for every student, it's gonna be a little bit different, but there are a number of things that you can expect day one walking in the door here. Number one is you're gonna have a lot of hands-on learning time, right? I'm an instructor that believes that not only do you need to know the fundamental theories of how to fix an airplane, what the rules and the regulations are, but also going into the field, you should be familiar and comfortable with how to use tools, how to diagnose problems. As our power plant instructor, we spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with engines, with aircraft. We have them on run stands. We have actual live aircraft that fly that our students get the chance to experience one-on-one. -on -one. We actually have multiple engines that our students get to tear down throughout the course of the program for power plant. We'll start by tearing down some of the basic recip engines. We have a four cylinder, we have a six cylinder, and we also have two six cylinders on run stands that the students will get hands-on work tearing apart and putting them back together. And one of the best things is taking those airplanes out and getting them to run. So a lot of you are wondering what it looks like to actually be an A&P school. Well, I'm here to tell you it's a relatively intensive program. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., you'll be here in the classroom or out in the hangar with one of our instructors. Now, that's not where the learning ends, however. We do all the hands-on projects, we do lectures, we do PowerPoints, video presentations of all of our students during the class hour days. But during the evenings, our students do have a little bit of homework. You know, it's no different than going to high school, going to a traditional four-year college, and that you'll have some reading assignments. You'll also get handouts to be able to fill out at your own pace. And we do have expectations for our students, like any other teacher. When we give an assignment, we expect it to be done in a timely manner. The unfortunate the unfortunate part is between eight hours a day in the classroom and the homework afterwards, it gets very difficult to be able to maintain a full-time job. And there certainly have been students that have done so, but what I found is the students that do the best in our program are the ones that can dedicate themselves fully to it. I'll be very honest, it is an intensive program. The Federal Aviation Administration requires that our students are in class for each and every one of the hours of our scheduled curriculum from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Any students that miss time, even if it's sick or family emergencies, that is time that needs to be made up. And it's very easy if you have a number of things compounding in your life to fall behind in the studies as a result. Here at Thrust, we do a pretty good job of offering open study halls after hours and even weekends and make up time for our students that do miss a class or two, but the federal authorities have made it very clear that they want the students being exposed to all of the curriculum in a classroom format. So the goal, the objective of the entire program is to receive your FAA certification for airframe and power plant mechanic. This is a multi-step process. First and foremost, there are a series of three written tests that must be conducted. First one is a general test, which covers anything from physics, the basics of aviation, and the rules and regulations we must follow. Then there's another written test that covers the power plant portion of the training, and that's about a 100 question written test. Finally, there is another 100 question written test to cover all airframe systems, which could be anything from structures, hydraulics, pneumatics, fire detection systems, and you have to pass those three written tests before moving on to the final step. The final step is to meet with the designated mechanic examiner, a DME, and sit down for what amounts to a one-day interview with them. You'll start with an oral portion of this exam, which may last anywhere between one hour to two hours, going over every topic that covers both airframe, general, and power plant, plus he may interject a couple other situational based questions. At the conclusion of the oral portion of the exam, you'll move on to what are known as your practicals or projects that the DME will assign for you to complete. Things like installing and timing a magneto, installing rivets, looking for defects in various aircraft structures. On completion of the program and all of your testing, provided you pass with that DME, you then are a licensed airframe and power plant mechanic. This opens you up to be able to take a job with the airlines, with the private shop, 
or potentially working in some more exotic industries such as the Goodyear Blimp. I once uh, knew a guy that got to work on the Goodyear Blimp crew and travel around with them for 10 years. More often than not, when I see a student that is struggling to get their a and certificate, it has to do with the federal written tests, be it your general, your airframe, or your power plant. One of the best things I tell students is to spend an hour a day working on their prep wear to study the questions that you could be exposed to during the FAA written. The students that don't have the time to dedicate to that or perhaps struggle with uh, written forms of questions tend to be the ones that fall behind in the program. When it comes to the actual oral and practical part of the examination, I find most students do very well because at that point they have made it through the written testing. So the big thing is, at the conclusion of school, where do you go? How do you find that job? How do you land that dream career you kind of had in mind? It all depends on where you want to go. In the general aviation side of things, the most common and most effective way to be able to find a job is literally print out an old school resume and go knocking on doors. Aviation, as big of a community as it is, it is still a small community and people appreciate that personal touch. Every job I've had in my career, I've gotten by walking through the door with no fear and asking to talk to the director of maintenance or in my flight experience, going and talking to the chief pilot. It is still the most effective way to get hired in general aviation. At the airlines, they are hungry for staff right now, especially mechanics, good ones. So what I suggest to people is to go to a job fair. Recently, I took 10 of our students from the school up to Oshkosh, Wisconsin for the EAA Air Venture Fly-In, and they had an entire recruiting booth full of recruiters from all of the major airlines looking to hire mechanics. And literally, it's as simple as walking through there, saying you're a mechanic, and you're gonna have recruiters pulling you this way and that way, wanting to talk to you because the opportunities are that good at this moment. One of the top questions I get from people leaving this program is how do I succeed in the field when I'm a mechanic? I can tell you, being an aircraft mechanic, it is tough work. You're going to have potentially long nights, long days, working in all sorts of climates. Over the course of my career, I've worked anywhere from frozen tundra of Alaska down to the sweltering summers here in Texas. So you've got to be adaptable. You've got to be able to put up with the longer hours, and it takes a fair bit of strength, right? One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give to a mechanic is to be willing to learn. I've been in this industry now over 15 years, and I'll be the first to admit that I still don't know it all. Each and every day I find I'm learning a new skill or seeing a problem that I have never seen before, and being able to be receptive to other mechanics' criticism, or perhaps it's not criticism, but even a more experienced mechanic trying to show you a better way of doing something, that's one of the biggest things I can tell you is be willing to learn at any moment in this industry, and it will make you a better mechanic in the long run. I will tell you this, to succeed, especially in general aviation, one of the best things a young aspiring mechanic can do is to go and get their pilot's license. I have an old adage that I always tell people, what good is a diesel mechanic that cannot drive a semi-truck into the shop? Likewise, I believe some of the best mechanics also go on to get at bare minimum a private pilot license. Well guys, I'll tell you, being an A&P mechanic is still a wonderful field to be able to get into. If you're at all interested, feel free to reach out to our admissions team here at Thrust Institute of Maintenance, or if you're local to the Dallas area, feel free to stop by and come take a tour of our facilities. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. By the way, if you like the content you're seeing here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks a lot for tuning in.